So your textbook actually has a, a kind of a, a little bit of a different way for doing this with basic solution. This is different than I've seen before, but we'll stick with the textbooks. That's probably how your instructor is doing it. Um, let's now pretend that this was actually in basic solution. So this is our answer for acidic solution. Now let's suppose that we were doing the same thing, but we are trying to balance this in basic solution. Well, your textbook has an interesting trick. Your textbook says, even if it's in basic solution, you should still first solve it as if it was acidic solution. And then you just make an adjustment. All right, so let's just say we've done it for acidic solution. Now here's the adjustment we would have to make if this was basic solution. So we can still use most of our work. We can still say that we have the one chromium and the six iodines. All right, but we can't stick with these H pluses anymore because those wouldn't appear in acidic solution. They would be in basic solution. And the way that your textbook gets rid of these is that they just add hydroxides to this because that would turn this into water, right? H plus plus hydroxide is water. How many hydroxides do we need to add? So we'll add 14 hydroxides here. And what would that give us? That would give us 14 waters. 14 H pluses plus uh, 14 hydroxides gives us 14 neutral waters. And then on the right side, we have two chromium three pluses. Plus we have our seven waters. Plus we have the three I2s. Now remember what we did is we added 14 hydroxides to the left. But that's only legal if we also add 14 hydroxides to the right. We can add anything we want to the left, but only if we do the same thing to the right. So now we're obligated to add 14 hydroxides to the right. And the hydroxides would be labeled as AQ phase. This is a pretty nifty trick. And now we're pretty much done. Because now instead of using H plus like we would in acidic solution, we are using hydroxides, which is what we would want to use in basic solution. And we know this must still be balanced. Because the original equation was balanced, and we added the same thing to both sides. So it must still be balanced. So this actually is a, is a good trick. I haven't seen this before, but this is a good way. Now we don't really have to learn a whole new way to do basic solutions. You can just treat it at first as if it was acidic. And then get rid of the H pluses by adding hydroxides. Yeah, so that's good. And then we have to do the same thing to the other side. Now, the one thing to watch out for here is now we have waters on both sides. So now we can cancel some of the waters. And what are we going to be left with? Seven on the left. Yes, yeah, seven on the left. So that's one more additional step. Now we have waters on both sides. Well, to put this in lowest terms, then we should cancel these seven with some of these. And we end up with just seven waters on the left. Unfortunately, your textbook doesn't have these steps really laid out in a very clear table. But the, uh, the first method was on pages 924 and 925 for acidic solution. And then here on page 926, they have this little extra note. So on the bottom of page 926, they say how to balance the redox reactions in basic solution with this extra step. So the extra step is add one hydroxide to cancel each, uh, add hydroxides to cancel the H pluses. And you have to do that to both sides and then excess water molecules are canceled. Okay, make sense? All right, so now we balance this for either acidic solution or basic solution.